All right guys, so it's finally time for the turbo rebuild. So for this, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to break down the turbo and how to rebuild this little guy. So if you saw from the start of this title, it's going to be pretty basic. Uh, this turbo here is a Precision 5858 turbo. Uh, this actually came off one of my friend's cars, Matt Sharp. This was actually on his, I believe it was on his Supra for, I don't know, four or five years, honestly. Um, and once we get down to it here, I'm not sure if you guys can even hear it, there's a ton of shaft play. The um, the bearing inside just shot. So I'm gonna go through this with you guys, show you how to rebuild it, uh, show you the tools that you need, everything you need to kind of get this done and go from there. Uh, one of the things I don't have right off top of my head right now is I ordered one bearing kit and it was wrong. Precision will not, I repeat, will not send you a bearing kit, you have to send it to them. I had a small fee of $200 for a journal bearing kit and once you see how easy this is, you're gonna be like, bruh, I'm never paying them to do it. So. Like I said, I'm going to show you guys how to take care of this. It's going to give you the very, very basics of all this and go over it from there. All right, guys. So first off here, we're going to go ahead and remove these nuts. Now, for this, I've already had to loosen them up. Um, for this Precision 5858, we have a total of six on the inlet side and another six on the exhaust side. Now, for my exact application for this 5858, we're going to use a 13 millimeter wrench. Uh, like I said, I've already loosened these up did not take much pressure, and this turbo's never been rebuilt, and it has been around for, good Lord, about 10 years. So if I can get these undone, you'll be able to get it done too. Uh, it wasn't that bad, and didn't take much force on my behalf. So like I said, just gotta remove these little guys now, and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and remove each one of these, and pull this off. I'm gonna set these off to the side here. Whoops, drop that one. Great, there's one. Now I just gotta remove the rest and the rear housing, and we'll be able to see the center cartridge in, which I'll go over and explain. I'm gonna speed this part up so you guys don't have to listen to me ramble on for the, be the better part of this right now. All right guys, so I got the housing off here. Now, when I did take it off, because you can probably see it there when I sped it up there a little bit, this, did not fully come off. It slipped off without it, which is not a big deal. Now it's off, no problem. Over there, good, great, good to go. So, what's up next? This is your inlet housing. This comes off, you guys can see here. That's it, very basic, just six bolts that hold it on, made of aluminum, no big deal. That's off. Now you can see your input shaft here, and you can also see your impeller. Now if you guys can see here, if you guys can see here, see how much movement I'm getting? We should not be having that. Now, with a journal bearing turbo, there is some movement, but if you can see, this is really bad, and I can push it back and forth on top of it. We shouldn't be having this much movement on the turbo. Um, this is a cheaper turbo. It is a journal bearing 5858 from Precision. Another thing that Precision does, and some other turbo manufacturers uh, also, they use this rubber seal to actually keep any type of pressure and everything in. Now, something like my Borg Warner does not even have this. Um, is it 100% necessary? No. Does it help reassure that the turbo is going to keep 100% sealed and efficient? Uh, yes. But is it necessary? No, at the end of the day, um, it's up to you. Most of the kits you're going to buy will give you a new one of these, but you don't need it per se. Um, I'm going to re not reuse this one. I'm most likely going to get a new one and replace it. But just wanted to say, if you don't have this or you feel like, all right, I don't, I'm just going to skip this step, it's not going to kill you. You might lose maybe a little bit of spool, but nothing that you'll be really, really be able to notice or it'll be very negligible. So now we still got to remove these bottom bolts here, or the back bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these real quick. What I'm going to do is set the turbo up so it's not resting on anything. I'm just removing these bolts, guys, I was showing you earlier. Um, they're not that bad to get to, but it's enough that it takes a skinny minute to get them off. Once they're off, it pops out pretty easily. This one looks like it's a little tight still for some reason. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but this one. Ah, there we go. Now I see why. It's actually hitting something. I always forget about that. Da, 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 da. Be able to spin this some. Get over here and grab this one now. Slowly pull up on it. Pull this bolt out. Come on. And there we go. Now our center section's out, guys, and I'll go over this here with you in detail. One thing I did notice, guys, right off the bat, I'm actually missing one of the bolts. There should have been six bolts there for the turbo, and I only have five and I just dropped one, but there should have been six there and I only have five, so I might have to go out and run and get another bolt when I do put this back together for y'all. So, one thing I'm gonna show you guys right off the bat. 
So one thing right off the bat, guys, this thing was hemorrhaging oil like badly, if you can see it there. That shouldn't be, there should be zero oil inside of this like that. This thing was burning oil like crazy. When he removed it, it was smoking, but I didn't realize it was this bad. Horrible, like really bad. So what we're gonna have to do is take a look at the center, se center section here. And you can see there is a ton of oil coming from it. Still a ton of play here. Now you're probably wondering next, how do I get the impeller off here or the inducer part of the turbo part from the rear housing? There's a small nut on the front here we're gonna have to remove. Let me show you what size you need for both the front nut here and for the rear. Now for the, for the rear bolt here is going to be a 14 millimeter and for the front bolt here is going to be a 10 millimeter. Now this rear one is actually built into the actual turbine wheel itself. The front one actually is the one that comes off. So this front one right here is the one that comes off and this rear one here stays on with the actual impeller. So what we'll do here next is remove this and this will slide out as one piece. This might require a little force, guys. Um, sometimes people put these in vices or whatever. Um, that is completely up to you. So I just lied there real quick. I'm sorry about that. The rear is still 14 millimeter. For the front, for the front bolt, you will actually need the 3 8 um, I'm not sure why that is because I can't get any American size or English size on the rear. It uses a metric on the rear for some reason. No idea why, but hey, it is what it is. So see if I can crank this off too. See if I can get this bad boy off. All right, guys, so got off the nut here. Uh, just used the 3 8 to crack that off. I actually ended up using my impact over there to make this a little bit easier. So go ahead and spin this off. Just a FYI, it is a reverse thread. Again, it is a reverse thread. So it's not lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. If you do that, you're going to spend all day screwing with it. It's a reverse thread. Now for this again, don't want to be too hard on this. This should wiggle off with a little bit of pressure or a little help from one of the sides here. So just a little bit more wiggle, and there we go. So now we have the front impeller off, or for the inducer of the turbo itself. Now, everything looks good here, but you can see, once again, a little bit of oil residue. What we can do next is pull out the rear part, or the exhaust housing. Next up, we have these little bolts right here, which there's four of them holding on the front plate here. Uh, it takes a, let's look here, a 7 16 rent, and I just loosen these guys up. Now it's gonna take a little bit of finger movement here and a little bit of play, uh, but they'll come off. It's a very tight spot to get to these guys. These aren't fun at all, unfortunately, but this is a necessary step to get this done. Now I've got this plate off the front here, so this is all taken care of now. You have this next piece next. I don't even know what this is called. I'm gonna be 100% honest. Uh, take off this part of the bearing system. Uh, just set this off to the side, we're gonna reuse that. Now we just have our center cartridge and our rear housing wheel. So next up, we have to remove the pieces in here and this bearing inside of the plate here. So what you need to do next is tap this with a rubber mallet, not a metal, um, and this will slide out then. So this will pop out just like that. And uh, yeah, all you have left is the center section itself. With that, will come this little cover, so this will be like this and this. Sorry, I didn't show that directly, but once you tap that out, this will slide out. Then the cover that goes over the housing will come out with it. Now, if you see with this, it is completely covered in oil here. This, it's been blown. This thing is no good. But now inside, and right now, I can see the, uh, the actual bearing itself. I'm sorry for the noise in the background. My wife's actually sanding, so I'm hoping you can hear me nice and clear. But there's a C-clip inside of here, a very tiny one, and it's very hard to get to. We need to replace this bearing inside of here next. So you're going to need something like this. I bought these from Craftsman from Sears a couple years ago when I rebuilt my Borg Warner Turbo. Uh, these were like 15 bucks, nothing too extravagant. Uh, you just need to get in here, and there's two, there's two little prongs in here. You need to get in here, see if I can get it. See now, I've got the C-clip out. I'm going to sit this down, and it just went flying. There's the bearing itself, guys. So no how it says, oh, my bearings are bad. This is what it is. It isn't a round bearing like most people think. It is just a brass bearing that sits inside there. And as always, it held it in with is this little C-clip. Now, most of these kits that you'll be getting will come with a new C-clip, so you don't need to usually reuse these, but I'm holding on to everything just in case. Now, you, this is the first one. There is two. Uh, this is for the intake side. Now, you have to remove the exhaust side. The exhaust side is a little bit harder to get down to. Um, there's not much room down there in that cavity to get these pliers down in there. Uh, this is going to take a little bit of finesse, and uh, hopefully this all goes well. Haha, -ha, success, finally. So let's just go ahead and drop that out. Now the bearing should just drop out. Keyword, should. 
but it's not. It's being a little butthead. So, takes a little smack and it came right out. And there's your rear bearing. So that's it guys. That's how you completely disassemble a precision turbo. This is 5858 journal bearing. The same concept though applies to most turbos. Now, there's going to be a second half to this video and I'm gonna show you how to then reassemble the turbo. Um, this is just the basics of getting it apart and there's some people that need to see how to get it apart or how to put it back together, but I'm gonna also walk you through putting it back together in a step two version of this video. All right guys, this is everything you'll need then to, once the turbo's apart and everything's done, uh, put the brackets over here, all the bolts. Here are the actual two bearings that you need to take out of it. Your inducer and your exducer from the turbo. You have your inducer and exducer actually wheels. Uh, this is be your inducer wheel or your um, input shaft wheel, or what's the word I'm looking for? Your inlet turbine wheel and your exhaust wheel. Um, and then you have your center cartridge and all the tools that you'll need. You'll need a 3 8 wrench, you will need a 7 16 wrench, a 14 millimeter wrench, a 13 millimeter wrench, and a rubber mallet. This is everything guys, now that it's all said and done, this is everything to take the turbo apart. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, journal bearing turbos are very basic, very easy to work with. One recommendation I will make before, when I took this off, this little guy here, which I'll mention at the beginning of this video just as a reminder, you need to mark where this nut came off. Um, mine was already marked, so it's not a big deal, but where this nut comes off, you need to mark it. So when you go to tighten it down, it lines back up. These are supposed to be balanced per se. Um, I'm not sure how much that really matters with a journal bearing turbo, just because of how much play there actually is. But for the sake, just to be on the safe side, if you guys could mark that before you remove it. And when putting it back together, make sure you put it back in the same exact spot. But guys, this is it. Uh, any journal bearing turbo for the most part is going to be just like this. Very basic, very simple to work with. Um, like I said, I'll be making another video showing me putting it back together and the kit that I use and the cost for that. All right, guys, so that's the basics for taking the turbo apart. Um, if there's anything I missed or if there's any questions you have, please leave them in the comments below. I'm gonna try and answer back as fast as I can. Once again, if you guys can see here at the end of this, this is a very basic turbo. Uh, the journal bearings itself, there's nothing to them. There's not actual like a round bearing in there. There is some confusion for people. They always think that's what it is and there's not. There's actually two brass bearings inside of there that are pressed in and held in with C-clips. They're very basic and they're very easy to rebuild yourself. Instead of paying Precision $200, you can buy a kit off eBay for 40 to 50 bucks. I'll show you that in the next video and go over that in detail. I don't have everything here right now where I do it all in one. Uh, I just kind of wanted to do this in step by step in case there's some people that don't want to try and skip through the videos and do all that. Um, I just think it's easier when you do a two separate video part for something like this, how to disassemble and then how to reassemble kind of video thing. Um, maybe you guys disagree with that, but that's just how I was seeing it. So I'm hoping this helps. Um, if there's anything else, I can also recommend to you when going through all this, make sure you clean everything off. Like I'm going to go through it here. I'm going to clean uh, everything off as much as I can. Now I'm not going to send it through a uh, cleaning machine or anything like that. Uh, some guys like to have the, the front housing powder coat at this point or they spray it down, do whatever. Um, I'm actually just going to rebuild this and either do one of a couple things. Either one, give it away. Number two, sell it. Or number three, give it to a friend who has an S15, which you've seen in other videos of mine, Kyle. And uh, we're actually going to do a built engine in his car and do all sorts of fun stuff with that in his SR20. Uh, this 5858 might be a little bit on the bigger side for him. Uh, it's also using a T4 housing and not a T3 housing, but we can always change the exhaust housing on it. So that's just some ideas of where we want to go next and what we want to do with the turbo itself. But that's another here, they're here and they're there. But thank you guys very much. That's how you rebuild the turbo. If you have any questions, let me know and say down in the comments below. Appreciate it, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.